Um, in math and science, we talk about uh, two types of quantities. One is a scalar, which is just a fancy word for a number, and the other is something called a vector. And in case you're wondering why it is that we actually differentiate, why would we even need something like a vector, uh, what I like to tell my students is think of a pushing analogy. If somebody comes, let's say, in front of you and pushes you with a certain force, let's just say it's a, a, a hundred newtons of force, um, that's a number. Well, you end up going backward in one direction. So let's say you're standing over here. If they push you this way, you're moving, you're going to end up being pushed that way. Let's say somebody comes from the other direction and pushes you in that direction. Well, you end up moving that way. As it turns out, you end up in different places. You end up moving in different directions. But they're both pushing you with the same force. So there is a difference because this is not the same motion. So as it turns out in the real world, um, we need something more than just a number. A particular situation needs to have certain situations, not all of them, need to have some other quality associated with them. And that quality is a direction. So if I say I'm going to push you with 100 newtons of force in this direction, that is a, we call it a vector having a length of 10, um, 100, what we call a magnitude, in that direction. If it were the other way, well, we say it's a vector whose magnitude is still 100, but it's in this direction. And these are two very different vectors they, because they have different directions, even though their magnitude is the same. So that's sort of a, a qualitative description of what, it, what a vector is. Okay, um, let's go ahead and talk about a reference frame for vectors. So we take as our reference frame the standard xy coordinate plane, the Cartesian plane, and to the right of the x is positive and up on the y-axis is positive, negative, negative, nothing that you don't already know. Okay. Now, if I start at the origin and if I draw, well, let's not draw it first, let me just pick a point. So I have this point, let's say the point is 2, 4. Well, yes, it's true, it represents a point in space, but if I start from the origin and put the tail of an arrow there, and if I go and put the head of the arrow something like that, notice I've actually now given you an explicit direction from a particular point, origin. Well, since this Cartesian coordinate plane is our frame of reference, the origin will be our ultimate point of reference. So now I have an arrow associated with this, you know, this, this coordinate here, 2, 4. Well, this coordinate is called a vector, and this arrow is also called a, called a vector. They're just two different representations of it. So if I call this vector u, I can certainly represent it as 2, 4. And another representation of it that I'll also see is I'll write it as a column matrix instead of a, I'll write it like this, 2, 4. So notice this is two rows in one column. And remember, anything that has either one row or one column uh, we called it a vector, so now we can see why we can associate this idea of a vector with a matrix. We don't necessarily have to have this coordinate with a comma in between. We can just represent a vector as the point 2, 4. And again, you're also welcome to write it as a row vector 2, 4, not necessarily with a coordinate. I mean, the only difference being that little comma there. So this is still saying move 2 in the x direction, 4 in the y direction, 2 in the x direction, 4 in the y direction. And now we've introduced this other notion of it actually being an arrow from the origin to this particular point. So with this arrow, now we have a physical something. And now there's something else that we can associate with it. We can associate a length with this arrow because it has a particular length. And we can associate an angle from a reference line. Well, we take our reference line as the x-axis, and we measure all angles in counterclockwise direction. So that would be considered a positive angle. And if I go this way, this would be considered a negative angle. If I go all the way around once, that's 360 degrees. If I go around twice, that is uh, 720 degrees. 2 times 360, yes, it's 720. So even though we end up in the same place, the angle measure is actually different. So again, counterclockwise, positive angle, 
clockwise negative angle. X-axis is our reference line. The origin is our reference point. Okay, let's define a couple of things. So if we have a vector, let's just take a generic vector, u, and again, vectors have that little arrow on top of it, and I'll do it as a column this time. Um, I'll often do both, and it's not really a problem. Later on, when we get into uh, certain aspects of linear algebra, it's going to be important on how we actually use a vector, whether we do it as a column or a row, but for right now, it's not really much of a problem. So we define the magnitude. The symbol for the magnitude is, oops, excuse me. So u is our vector. We have the symbol for the vector, and we put two double lines around it. That's the magnitude, and that's just the length. Well, you know that if this is our vector, let me actually draw it again over here, so make it a little more clear. Well, if I have this particular thing, and here is the point x, y, well, you know that we've moved to the right x units, and we've moved up y units, so this is y and this is x. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that x squared plus y squared equals this length squared, so we define the magnitude as x squared plus y squared under the radical sign. That gives us the length of the vector, or the magnitude. All these fancy words. Now, we can also define this angle. So if we call this angle theta, well, we have y, but we have x. The relationship between theta is tangent. So if I have the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Well, that implies that the angle theta itself is going to be the arctangent or uh, inverse tangent of y. Oops, just little lines. I don't want them to get in the way here of what we do. y divided by x. So when you're given a vector in this form, you can find out the length, and you can find out the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. And remember, again, we're measuring that way. Okay?